Hey, sorry about being gone for so long. Uh, I'll be playing a lot of Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, it's, that game is really fucking fun, so... Um, sorry for waiting one month to make a new fucking video. One of the most common phrases I hear in YouTube videos is, Man, X thing was so much better back then. This is an especially common saying when it comes to video games. You'll constantly hear people defending the old title by saying, Oh, this thing came out back in 1994, as if a horrifically scuffed piece of shit coming out nowadays is somehow making the game worse. However, when a studio or company goes back and attempts to remake a game, they have an extra chance to make the game better than it was in the original form. Nowadays, and hell even back then, remasters were and still are the more common option. Why go back and basically make a new game based on an old one when we can just take an old one and put it on something new? It's pretty simple logic, but a remix will forever be objectively more exciting than remasters because unless if the original game is just super buggy and the remaster fixes that, remasters can't really fix any of the original issues the game has. And of course it goes without saying that if the original game is a really old 3D game, the higher resolution obviously won't fix the absurdly low polygon count. However, with a remake, you can not only get a more modern looking and feeling experience with better hardware, but you can go back and fix the problems the game once had or add more content. And even if you don't, you'll still get their good but arguably less cool outcome of it looking really cool. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's kind of what we got with Metroid Prime Remastered, which is still a great game but it didn't add much new. However, no matter if you get added content or it just looks really cool, remakes are still a big deal and that's what I'm talking about today. I wanted to take a look at 5 remakes today, all part of the Mario series since fuck off okay, I'm still doing the retrospective, that's why. Super Mario Bros Deluxe as well as the 4 part Super Mario Advance series is what we'll be looking at today. And just a heads up because I'm going to tell you one is infinitely cooler than the rest of them. Super Mario Bros Deluxe released on July 1st 1999 and is a remake of, you guessed it, Super Mario Bros. It released on the Game Boy Color and that seems to be the exact reason a lot of people don't really like this one that much, or at least not as much as the original. And yeah, let's talk about that first. It's not that bad dude, like yeah it's bad that the screen crunch is there in the first place but the camera is consistently set ahead of Mario to give you a lot more breathing room. Meaning other than the cheap cheap bridge levels which are actually ruined by the screen crunch you basically always have enough time to see what's coming up which is exactly what I had to say about Mario Land 2 as well. But other than that this remake is basically perfect. First off I wanted to mention the controls. They didn't improve on them too much and they're still mostly bad but they make slowing down in mid air slightly faster which was one of my bigger problems with the controls. But other than that the Mario 1 portion of the game is the same. The bonus is however. Dude no joke I give the original Super Mario Bros like a 4.5. It's still fun but in reality the game has too many issues for it to be anything better than okay. However Super Mario Bros Deluxe is a game I give a solid 7.5. The changes to the controls and especially the bonuses are good enough to make it that way. Hell, I even put it above Donkey Kong 94, which is insane given the score I'd give the original. First off, after earning 300,000 points total or using a, well, a, a cheat code like I did, you unlock Super Mario Bros. for Super Plays, which as bad as this may sound, is a remake of Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. However, there is one key difference that I have already mentioned that makes it better, and that's the controls. Legit, until now I've been thinking that the levels are the entire problem, and yeah, they still are a little bit of the problem, but after playing this I'm realizing it's a sort of combo of that and the controls. Looking back on my experience playing the original Lost Levels, more than any other death in a game, I recall me dying just because my character wouldn't stop fucking moving forward in the air more than any other death in the game. And yeah, the Lost Levels is still worse than the original, but this remake honestly isn't horrible anymore. If anything, I'd give it like a 4 out of 10 or something. But now we're on some real shit, and I genuinely can't believe I'm saying this, but this is such a fantastic bonus mode, I consider it to be one of the best bonus additions in the series only behind, well, the minigames in New Super Mario Bros obviously. And I'm talking about you versus Boo. This is a minigame with 8 unique and great levels where you have to race a Boo to the flagpole and it is genuinely nuts how fun this is. I mean racing through a level in 2D Mario is already a great idea given how fast paced 2D Mario is. And I'm pretty sure that this is the only time they actually use the concept behind the Wiggler races in that game. Along your race you'll see these pink and red blocks and these are what really sells it for me. Occasionally the blue what? Occasionally the blue...
Stop. Occasionally, the boo will flip these invisible blocks into solid blocks and vice versa. If the red blocks are active, they're meant to get in your way and slow you down, and you have to hit these switch blocks to get them back to pink. It is crazy how fun this can get. Some of these situations ranging from these blocks not hindering your progress at all and making you straight up lose the game. They're not perfect, I think the fact that some of them are unavoidable and you have to turn them back to progress is going a bit too far, but overall this makes the minigame for me. Not only that, but sometimes when you beat the boo it gets replaced with a faster green one to add replay value. And I didn't even realise this until the 4th level, but sometimes after beating that green boo, an even faster pink one can replace the green one to add even more replay value. It's absolutely nuts, and I love it. Lastly, we have three more options you have from the start, and also this versus mode I can't play sadly. We have the high score menu, the photo album, and the toy box. The high score menu is self-explanatory, but I do quite like the album. It's a collection of oddly high quality images for the Game Boy Color that you unlock by doing... Well, I'm not sure honestly. It doesn't tell you what to do or even what you did to get it after unlocking it. There's also these little captions for each image, but you can edit them to say whatever you want, and I mean whatever you want. Overall, this remake is just fucking fantastic in basically every way, dude. It's honestly rare I end up liking a 2D Mario platformer this much, but it's honestly just way too good. And easily the highlight of this video, 7.5 out of 10. And sadly, the rest of these games are a decent goddamn bit less interesting. Honestly, one of the sole reasons I procrastinated on this video for so long. Super Mario Advance released some blah blah blah, you get the fucking point. This is a remake of Super Mario Bros 2, which is a bit odd. I've heard some people say it's because Mario Deluxe came out on the handheld before the Game Boy Advance and the Mario Advance series is a sequel to Mario Deluxe, but I don't know. That could be the case, but the GBA is 16-bit unlike the Game Boy Color which is 8-bit, and it just doesn't seem like something Nintendo would actually do, even back then. I guess you could also argue it's because there's like a bajillion different versions of Super Mario Bros at this point, but I also don't really see that, as at this point there was no handheld version of the Super Mario All-Stars version of Mario 1, and the first Super Mario advanced game is essentially just the old stars version but regardless i'm honestly not even sure if this is a little better or a little worse than the original mario 2. first of all and probably my biggest issue is the presentation it takes all the sprites from the all stars version of mario 2 and in what i can only assume is because of the lack of a backlight on the game boy advance brightens them up a decent bit it's debatable if this is better than the original nes games presentation i personally prefer the original because it's a lot more simple and charming but i don't think it'd be wrong to assume most people would say the original is better. The same also goes for the soundtrack. While some people could say this one has a better soundtrack, it's hard to deny that there is a substantially lower amount of energy to the songs here, even if they are more high quality. However, the change in the presentation that probably made me the most sad was the changes to subspace. Now, if you don't remember, subspace is accessed by throwing a potion to create a door and going through said door, and here you can collect coins for the casino or on certain occasions, a health boost. All of that is maintained here, but the reason I like the original version is completely lost here. Now the assets for subspace are just the assets for the regular level just darkened. Now yes, art is subjective, but honestly I think you can say this looks a whole lot worse on an objective level. The original at least had an intent behind it, it's a weird version of the original world. And to reflect that, the colours are changed exclusively to black for the blocks and dark blue for the sky, with the only thing staying the same being you and the door. This one however, it kind of just looks like shit. Not only is the contrast between the normal level and subspace much less defined, but the contrast between you and subspace is much less defined too. It fucking sucks, dude. Probably one of the series' biggest claim to fame is that the Marios don't shut their damn mouths, actually having voice lines and taking those voice lines into overdrive. This is a change that makes it more Mario, I guess, but it can get decently annoying. The only real change made to the actual gameplay is that there are now five ace coins, most comparable to the star coins or more accurate the dragon coins from Mario World. These things are a big improvement on the dragon coins though, as the spots they're placed in are always spots where you have to go out of your way to grab them. I still don't think these are nearly as good as the star coins though. Because this is a remake, they can't alter the levels too much, which means there's no opportunities for unique set pieces made just for the ace coins to be more fun collectibles. I don't recall finding too much fun collecting these, but it certainly is a good thing that they're here. And the series' actual biggest claim to fame is the inclusion of a 
completely separate remake of Mario Bros. This is pretty damn cool, however, as I covered in my Mario Bros video, this remake isn't exactly the most fun thing in the world. My main issue with the remake is that it adds air control, which is a good thing on its own, however, the game doesn't make the game harder in any other way. However, the game doesn't make the game harder in another way, making the game obscenely easy. So that sure, the game feels nice to play, but it's not rewarding really, kinda sucks even in comparison to the original. Still better than that NES version though, that shit's horrible. I'm still conflicted on if this is better than the original because of the Mario Bros remake or worse because of everything else, but for now I'm just going to say this is a tiny bit worse, just because of all the changes to the main game and the Mario Bros mini game not being good enough to carry the game into being better. Does the rest of the Super Mario Advance series live up to expectations? Well I think it's time for the next one, Super Mario Advance 2, a remake of Super Mario World. Not too dissimilar to Mario Advance 1, the graphics have been brightened significantly except it's even worse here dude. Dude. Literally everything other than the literal color black is at max brightness. Even Mario and Luigi's skin which is literally made of ice cream. The soundtrack is bad too. Unlike a lot of 8 and 16 bit consoles, the GBA literally does not have a sound chip and instead sound is processed by the CPU which is why music can sound so weird on it. However, unlike Advance 1, there aren't even any new gameplay additions to make it somewhat better than the original. Luigi is there, sure, but he's super slippery and is just less fun to play as than Mario. The only change to the gameplay there is to my knowledge is that the spin jump moves you barely use mana add is mapped to the R button, finally fixing my issue with it from the original. As jarring as it is to just move on, this as well as Mario Advance 3 I don't have much to say about, but I'll give a brief summary on the latter. Advance 3 is a remake of Yoshi's Island, which I haven't even played much of. It's exactly the same, at least to my knowledge, and the best thing I have to say about it is that it looks identical to the original. I originally thought Nintendo ditched the bright colors thing because the Game Boy Advance SP released which actually had a backlight meaning they didn't have to do that anymore. But after actually searching it up, the SP came out about 5 months later so I genuinely don't know. Even in this game's latest release which was here in Australia, the SP came out here a month after the game's release here. So I literally don't know what the possible reason could be unless Nintendo made this decision because the SP was in development which is probably the most likely reasoning even if a little strange. And now our last stop on this tiny ass journey, Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros 3. Yes, that is the actual name. And it's basically just a port of Super Mario All-Stars version of the game. Music sounds a bit worse, but this is the same game. Unless you have the add-up for the Game Boy Advance called the e-reader which scans cards to add stuff to your game and use the Super Mario Advance for Super Mario Bros 3 e-reader cards to scan into the e-reader to unlock new levels. Now while the original has these levels locked behind cards, the Wii U Virtual Console version and the recently released Switch Online version has them bundled in without any card bullshit. These levels aren't much to write home about but more Mario 3 is appreciated, especially with the extra graphical fidelity. And yeah, that's Super Mario Advance 4 Super Mario Bros 3. Pretty goddamn cool. However, I won't sit here and act like Super Mario Bros Deluxe was the only interesting one here. These games are all good, don't get me wrong, but with the exception of Mario Deluxe you should just play the originals. Super Mario Advance, while a little worse than the original, certainly tried it with the ace coins in the bonus Mario Bros mode that were going to be used in every other Mario Advance game. Super Mario World Super Mario Advance 2 is a little unpolished, especially with the new presentation, but it's weirdly charming with its opening cutscene and odd new graphics that are kinda cool sure, but still ugly. Yoshi's Island The Super Mario Advance 3 is easily the most impressive, replicating the way the game looks in a way that is quite literally impossible to tell apart from the original. And Super Mario Advance 4 Super Mario Bros 3 is very similar to the All Stars version, but is still super cool with bonus levels and all. However, still none of them compared to Super Mario Bros Deluxe, which, while not perfect as a game, is certainly almost perfect as a remake. Certainly counts for something that a remake is so good that it's better than most of the original games on the list. Yo, what do you want? Hey bro, I saw this shit at the store and I knew I had to buy it. Okay bro, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Yo! Take care and don't catch a cold!